So in today's setup guide, I'm going to be showing you how to get up and running with Hyperspin. So as we know, Hyperspin is a very complex system and I've done my best to ensure that I've map this out as simple as possible for new starters to hyperspin so in this setup guide we're going to be looking at where to get these files from which i'm going to leave links in my description i'm going to be showing you how to set up your controller as hyperspin only works with keyboards i'm also going to be briefly showing you hyper launch which is kind of like a modern day version of a program called rocket launcher so there's plenty in this setup guide and like i said this is going to be actually part of a series so today we are just literally setting up the essentials. So if you fancy a modern day setup guide to hyperspin, check this one out. I'm going to do my best to get you sorted. Okay, before I start today's Hyperspin initial setup, just make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like if you like today's video. Helps my channel out a great deal, plus it gets you up to date retro emulation content as I upload it, which is pretty much every day. So we're looking at Hyperspin today. Now, as many of you are aware, this is a highly complex front end system to configure. We're gonna need a lot of files for this, a lot of downloads, but hopefully I'm gonna get you there. And this is gonna be a series and we're focusing today just on the initial setup stages of Hyperspin and a separate program which works besides Hyperspin named Hyperlaunch. But as I go through this video, I'm gonna hopefully explain this in layman's terms. So what we're gonna do then first is just head over to the Hyperspin website. And link's gonna be in my description for everything that I'm showing you today. First of all, what we're going to need to do is download the latest Hyperspin, which as we can see here is Hyperspin 1.5.1. And this says full package. Also note that it does say below, if download is failing, please disable antivirus. And I'm gonna do my best in a minute just to make sure that your antivirus is disabled. So if we go inside of Hyperspin 1.5.1, you can download it just here. It just says download this file and that's gonna download. Now, what you need to do with Hyperspin website is actually register, sign up, and it's absolutely free. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to download this package. So once you've signed up, you can then download this. Okay, so once you've downloaded this package, Hyperspin 1.5.1, we're gonna come back out of here. And if we scroll down on this page, we're gonna find Hyperspin 1.5.1 upgrade files. Now, the reason you need to download this also is that at some point during Windows 10 release, a lot happened with Hyperspin and the files that came with it. And it meant that Hyperspin could no longer boot. So for this reason, you definitely need to download this upgrade file too. So like I said, grab these two downloads, sign up and register. So you need Hyperspin full package 1.5.1 and you also need to download Hyperspin 1.5.1 upgrade files. So I've already downloaded these ready for this setup guide and I've got these two in a Hyperspin folder. Okay, so like I was saying just a second ago, we do need to disable antivirus, otherwise your Hyperspin files aren't gonna download. So to do this, in my case, I'm running Windows Defender. I'm gonna just go to my search bar and type in Defender and we're gonna find Windows Security. If we click on there, you, you should see virus and threat protection. And if we go down to manage settings from here, just ensure real-time protection is turned off like I've got here. So yeah, it looks a little bit shady, but the truth of the matter is, is that these files through Hyperspin or using dot bats, that type of thing, there's nothing wrong with them. As we know, this is coming from a legitimate Hyperspin website and there's nothing to worry about. So this is what you're going to download, a Hyperspin 1.5.1 zip and a Hyperspin 1.5.1 upgrade zip. So what I'm going to do first then, before we go into Hyper Launch, is that I'm actually going to set this up in my C drive. If you're using an external hard drive for this, then you can do exactly the same as what I'm doing. But like I'm saying, I'm doing this on my C drive. So I'm in my C drive and what I'm going to do is create a new folder. So right click on an empty space 
go to new folder and just title this hyperspin And once you've created that folder on your C drive or your external drive, just open up that folder. And what we need to do now is just go into the Hyperspin 1.5.1 zip and copy everything inside of that zip folder and just drag it into that Hyperspin folder that you've just created. Okay, so once everything's been copied over into that folder, what we're going to do next is just delete that zip. We no longer need this one. And if we scroll down, we're going to find Hyperspin XE. You can try to open this, but like I was saying, during the release of particular Windows 10 updates, it rendered Hyperspin pretty much unusable. So this is where the next file that we downloaded comes in. We got Hyperspin 1.5.1 upgrade. If we drag these contents into that same Hyperspin folder and replace the files and destination, and should you get a little window come up saying folder in use, we can clearly see that some of it's being used by Hyperspin and that's because I launched it just now, but we didn't get anything. So what we need to do is control Alt and Delete, Task Manager, and if you take a look under your background processes, you're going to find Hyperspin just here. So it's definitely running without that. It's just that we're not getting a picture for it. So for now, what we're going to do is just right click on that and end task. And if we go to try again, as you can see, the application is closed down and the rest of those contents is now transferred over. So again, once you've transferred that upgrade into that Hyperspin folder, we can now delete this upgrade zip. And we can try again to open up Hyperspin. So just like any other XE, double left click. But it's quite likely you're still not going to get this to open. So this is where the last file comes in. And we need this sxs.dll file just here. And I'm going to leave the link in my description for this one too. This is on the community of Hyperspin. And you can download this DLL file just here. So just left click on it and that's going to download. Now what we need to do with this one is literally just drag that .dll file inside of that Hyperspin folder. Now, if we launch up Hyperspin again, it's obviously still running just like a minute ago. So just control Alt and delete once again, just to end that process. Task manager. And like I said, it's going to be under background processes. So if you scroll down just here, we're going to find that it's actually opens, but we can't see it. So right click on it end task. And that's it. Now we've got everything in that Hyperspin folder, including that .dll. So what we're going to do is launch Hyperspin. And here we are. Hyperspin. Okay, so once Hyperspin's opened up, we're going to see that this boots directly into a Windows mode. We've also got a list of systems here, such as Main, Super Nintendo, 3DO. None of so for now, I'm going to press Escape on my keyboard and just exit this. So press Enter on Yes. And before I go on, I'm going to just very briefly show you how to actually put this into a full screen mode. So back in your Hyperspin folder, you're going to find a folder here called Settings. If you go into Settings, we're going to find a lot of dot in is representing lots of different systems. The one we're actually going to look for 
is set in stock any. If you just open this up with notepad and what we're going to do is just change under resolution, we're going to see full screen and it says full screen equals false. What we're going to do is just delete false and just type in true and just go at the file and save this. And if we go out of the settings folder, so we're back into the main route of Hyperspin. Let's just open up Hyperspin again. Hyperspin. So as you can see, we now got full screen mode. So let me just make you aware that if you're not sure, Hyperspin itself is the actual front of it, the glossy part. So we need an additional program to set up emulators in multiple emulators to work alongside Hyperspin. And this is gonna be called Hyperlaunch. So I've already downloaded these, but I'm gonna show you in a second what's download and where to download these. But we need a Hyperlaunch and a Hyperlaunch HQ, which you can see what I've already got here. So what we're gonna do is grab both of these. Now, the easiest way I found of getting these is just typing into Google or whichever search engine you're gonna be using, Hyperlaunch downloads and leave the link in my description for both of these first result is hyper launch so we need to download hyper launch windows 10 and these are safe sites so just download this one hyper launch and the version as we can see is 3.0.09 and separately we need to also download hyper launch hq so again, it's the same website and this is absolutely fine. It's not riddled with viruses or anything like that. So just download Hyperlaunch HQ. Okay then, so we've got our Hyperlaunch files. So we should have Hyperlaunch in the archive file and we've also got a zip folder of Hyperlaunch HQ. So what we're gonna do is go back into the Hyperspin folder, right click on it, create a new folder. So new folder and just call this one Hyperlaunch. HQ and we're going to open up Hyperlaunch HQ folder and go back to what we just downloaded and we're going to open up that Hyperlaunch HQ zip folder and just drag all of those contents inside of that Hyperlaunch HQ folder that we just created. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need to do is go back into the root of Hyperspin and we're going to open up the Hyperlaunch archive this time. And what we're going to do is just drag everything again into the Hyperspin folder. And replace the files in destination. What this is going to do is just update things. So replace files. Okie doke, so we're done now with those Hyperlaunch downloads. Everything's in our Hyperspin folder. So what we're gonna do next then is go into Hyperlaunch HQ folder and launch Hyperlaunch HQ.exe. And this is gonna come up, couldn't find Hyperlaunch executable. So we're gonna press okay on this. And what we're gonna do is just head up to Hyperspin, just make sure that's highlighted and press OK. The next problem is, it's gonna say error, can find your system's database. Please select your front end executable. So press OK. This should then direct you directly into your Hyperspin folder. If you just scroll this down, what we're gonna do is just highlight hyperspin.exe and press open. And that's gonna then launch Hyperlaunch HQ. And here we have it. So we should now have a fully working Hyperspin front end, which launches and I've showed you the fixes for this. And we've also sorted out Hyperlaunch HQ. And Hyperlaunch HQ is where we can start adding emulators and generally set things up for Hyperspin to run our games. Okay, so let's take a look at Hyperlaunch HQ. So just remember that Hyperlaunch HQ 
it's kind of like the skeleton behind of hyper spin so under general settings we'll find that paths is all directly linked up to the hyperspin folder that we created including telling hyperlaunch where to launch hyperspin as we can see just here front end executable path hyperspin.exe and we can test this that is actually linked up with the hyperspin folder just by clicking on this little tv icon just here which says launches your defined front end And it's that simple. If we go over to the emulators tab, we'll find a whole list here of different emulators that aren't installed. But as we can see, Hyperlaunch has picked up all these different systems that's going to run just fine with Hyperspin. But you'll also notice on the side that the emulator paths aren't set up as of yet. And this is why they got little red circular exclamation marks. And if we go over to the modules tab at the top, we'll see lots of different .ahk files. And the ones in green are the ones that we've actually got set up in Hyperlaunch right now. So let me just remind you that modules are kind of little files which powers our games. A bit like RetroArch uses cores, well Hyperlaunch kind of uses modules. Okay, next up, as it stands, Hyperspin won't be controlled by any controller you throw at it. It's pretty annoying that is standard it's only going to work from a keyboard so i've got a little fixed startup script just here for you to use and just remember you do need to register with hyperspin but i'm going to leave the link to this page so you can connect straight to this so you don't have to search all day for it but just remember to sign up and register so this is i'm led to believe going to work with most controllers so all we're going to do here is just download this file and that's going to download a zip folder which i've already got on my desktop if we open this up what i'm going to do next is go back into my hyperspin folder on my c drive and within here i'm going to create a new folder called utilities so just right click on an empty space new folder and type in something like utilities and what i'm going to do with this startup script i've just downloaded for controls is just drag inside of that utilities folder this exe and if we go inside of there if i just double left click on this exe it's going to generate a dot ini and this is pretty much a text document so if we open up this dot ini so right click on it open with notepad Here we go, so we got a text document just here, and the first thing we need to do is link this up to where our hyperspin folder is located. So just a very simple case of just highlighting hyperspin at the top just there, and right click it, copy address, and what I'm gonna do is just backspace both of these and just control and V, so that's now pasted in hyperspin folder. Next thing I'm going to want to do is under controls, joysticks enabled equals false. I'm going to backspace false and just type in true. And that's that for now. So just go to file then and save. Next thing we're going to do is just go down to hyperhq.exe. And from here, once this is open, I'm going to go to startup exit startup program so i need to tell hyper hq to start this script when we boot up hyperspin so it reads from our controllers rather than keyboards so i'm going to go over to the little folder and point this into my utilities folder and just highlight or double left click hyperspin startup scripts.exe so double left click that and finally we're going to need to go to controls at the top of hyper hq and just select the joystick tab and from here, we can then map out our controller. So I'm using a Series X or Series S controller for this. So just go to each one of these just here and just set it. So up on my D-pad, down on my D-pad and so on. And just make sure that joystick one is enabled. By default, this will be disabled. Just make sure it's checked. 
And that's about it. So just remember in Hyper HQ, it automatically saves everything we do. So if we back out of this, and if I open up Hyper Spin again, it should now work with my controller rather than just the keyboard. And that's it for part one of my Hyperspin setup guide series. So the next part of this is going to be coming up fairly soon. Just make sure to hit notifications so you don't miss part two where we're going to be looking at setting up emulators and other bits and pieces. So like I said at the start of the video, if you like this, what you've seen today, hit notifications, subscribe, and like also cover a range of different standalone emulators as well as a range of different front ends. And also be sure to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro. Thank <laughs> you.